Hello everyone and welcome back to Crane Videos. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a old Browning camera like this right here and turn it into a nice dimmable little desk lamp. These are nice for your bookshelves, your desk, nightstand. And so let's get started. Okay, so to start with, there's a switch right here on the top. The camera breaks into two pieces. The very first thing we'll need to do is we have to actually cut this piece right here off to make room inside for our switch, the uh, incoming wires for the light, and the incoming wires for the cord itself. So I like to use just a simple Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and just go all the way around. Uh, you can use a hacksaw, a bunch of different tools, doesn't really matter what you use. This just works pretty good. Makes a little bit of dust, but not too bad. And there we go. Whole thing comes off, not too shabby. Like I said, you can use drills, uh, make a bunch of holes. You can even use an X-Acto knife, hacksaw, whatever works best for you. Okay, so now we have that back piece cut off there. So now what we need to do is we're gonna drill some holes in the back cover piece for, put one in the back for the cord. We're gonna put one over here for our switch. And then we'll put another one over on this side for our 90 degree pull box connector. And it's gonna end up going right in here. And then we're actually also gonna use a half inch uh, flex screw in connector into the top. And then that's what's gonna actually hold our little uh, light socket. So, we'll get one going here. And I start off with a drill just to make a little pilot hole and then I'll use my step bit after that to enlarge the hole large enough for this 90 degree connector. And then you'll get that on there. Take your screw in the back, your retaining nut. And then a lot of times if you need to, you can either get some thin pliers or even take a screwdriver to hammer on these little lips to get it down real tight if you feel you need to. Okay, let's get this cleaned up a little bit. Oh, before we do that, let's get our other holes in there. Now keep in mind, with this hole and this hole, these I can do really quick because I built this lamp before, so I already know where they go. Uh, but if it's your first time, you definitely want to take out your switch beforehand and make sure that it's going to fit uh, wherever you put the hole for the, uh, the stem to come through for the actual switch itself. And we'll show you that here in just a second as soon as we get this cleaned up. Now you're also going to find on the inside there's gonna be these two lips that when we go to put this switch inside, that we'll have to grind down so we have enough room to get all the way through so we can get a thread on the other end of the, uh, the switch. So I like to just take a uh, sandpaper wheel with my Dremel tool, makes pretty quick work of it. you can see in there now we've 
ground that down so it's nice and flush. So when I put the switch in there, it'll fit flush up against the inside of the plastic. Okay, so now we have our hole in the back for the cord, up here on the side for the switch. We have our E11 light socket, our half inch flex to screw connector. So this fits pretty snug on its own. Once you push it in, you actually have to pull a little bit to get it back out. But I'll still add just a little bit of hot glue just to be sure it stays. Just make sure you keep the tip of the hot glue gun off of the actual wires. And then you can see down in there, you just put glue all the way around the perimeter. And then, pull this cover off. the wires through and then we can put this cover back on now all right and then everything else we we'll want to do the rest of our wiring before we actually install this uh, just be easier to get all the wiring done out here and then we put everything in now we're going to get everything all connected. We've got our fabric rack twist cord coming in the back side here. The wire is actually going up to the light socket right over here and our switch. So we'll get these all soldered together. go. I'm going to let that cool off for just a quick second and then we'll throw, move the heat shrink over all of it. Again, always make sure put your heat shrink tube on before you do your soldering. I say that because I've made that mistake myself plenty of times. So we've got our connections, the cord coming in, one leg goes straight to the light, one leg goes to the switch, and then back out the other side to the light also. And we've got our heat shrink on here. There we go. Now, we have this all put together. We'll take this screw off of here. And then you can just push the wiring inside. And fit that right through. And then you just have your cap, and there you go. And 
There'll be a link, obviously, with everything in here and this particular switch, dimble switch, down below. I highly recommend using this particular switch. I've tried a few other dimble switches and it wasn't long enough to be able to thread through to get the nut on uh, through the thicker plastic of these. They're made for really thin sheet metal, I guess. So I highly, I personally recommend if you, you know, want to try a different one, go for it. But this one has been my favorite so far. It's a little bit bigger on the inside, but it's nice and heavy duty and absolutely will work. So now, the only other thing you'll notice is that because you've cut that whole innards out is this won't lock as well anymore. So usually what I'll do is when I get all done and it's all to my liking, I'll put a little bead of super glue right here on the bottom and push that together because once it's all done, there shouldn't be any need to get back into it. But even if you don't, I mean, it sets just fine. No problem as a desk lamp. It's not like it's gonna fall off or anything. It's just if you get rough with it, you can see it'll open up just a little bit like that. So we have our cord. We have our plug here. And we'll just get this attached. And obviously there are multiple different styles of these do-it-yourself plugs and you can pretty much I'll put a link to this particular one also but any of them will work just fine just whatever your preference and the look you're going for and this one just snaps back over There we go. And then we'll add our 40 watt LED bulb. And let's see if it works. There we go. And now you have a dimmable camera lamp and depending on the style of bulb you like I like the LED bulbs just because they don't put off hardly any heat but there's a variety of different type of the E11 or E12 excuse me or the chandelier style bulbs uh, that work just fine for this awesome I hope you liked the video uh, please feel free to comment down below love your guys' comments and let me know what you'd like to see for a next lamp thank you and have a great day